Hey everyone, Ivy League Gaming here, and today we're playing Dragonair Silent Gods. For today's video, I'm on my free-to-play account to do another guide, this time on the Ancient Battlefield Season 1. Today's video is sponsored by Dragonair Silent Gods, my favorite sponsor because it's my favorite game that I've played in a long time. Be sure to join us for Season 3, Dive Deep, Battle Peak. There's a ton of new heroes, new bosses, and lots to explore. Be sure to download via Android, iOS, Mac, PC, Steam, or Epic Games if you haven't already, and use the currently working promo codes. Alright, so this is the final one of my series of kind of doing an updated guide on all of the dungeons. So I've already done one on Heretical Ruins, Grave of Rot, Grave of Curse, Grave of Venom, and the Flame Domain, as well as a deep dive into the Goblin Lair. There's a lot of fun strategies there, and I even found some after the fact I didn't even know about, but anyway. I did not do Frost Domain and Tempest Domain. They're a bit more simple. Uh, you could power through a lot more easily, but if anyone wants guides on those, just let me know and I can add that to the mix. Flame Domain is the one that's the hardest, and you can, yeah, check my videos there. But now, we are on to the Ancient Battlefield. So, Season 1 had a lot of changes, like I mentioned in previous videos, and more recently changes within the past month as of this recording so we had to do some updates but the dungeons overall are the same the differences are the stages for the dungeons like the, the boss is the same i should say and the way that they do the rewards are a little bit different there's a lot of different visuals as well so all right here we are ancient battlefield let's get into it so this boss here i'm only on seven i think i can do eight i probably could even do nine right now with my team but I hadn't pushed this boss very far yet. But we have 12 stages. At stage 12, you're guaranteed two negative runes that are legendary, plus um, some uh, the resources to get more, and a couple of the actual epic ones as well. And as you go down, you get different options here for how many you get based on the levels. So let's take a look here at level one and check the lineup recommendations versus this boss. Oops, not lineup recommendations. That's next. View the info versus this boss. So the boss has this sword form weird switch thing that it does in shield form, basic attacks do necro damage, blah, blah, blah. They both have like in sword form they do as well. But it's you'll see here with the different forms, they um yeah, do different things besides the type of damage i mean so there's also immune to all control effects like all the dungeon bosses so all right this boss in shield form stuns the furthest hero and if the stun fails or isn't dispelled he'll be inflicted with backfire in sword form he gains attack up and defense up and dispels all buffs from the enemy team and gains a permanent damage bonus based on the number of buff dispelled so this is what we're going to talk about here so first of all this is the shield form start and, and he will um and he will get backfire if he fails to land the stun so here reduces damage dealt by 20 percent and damage incre increases damage taken by 20 percent so this is going to make the boss easier to kill and make the boss do less damage so this is why we say you need someone, whoever is going to be the furthest away, to have resistance. This is the first part of beating this boss is you want to go with the recommended resistance um, to avoid the stun. That's really important. And it's really easy to do, honestly. You just pick like a healer or someone else that's extra support maybe to have resistance. All right, next up here. The shield form switches to sword form and he gains the buffs. So all enemy all right, deals damage to all enemies and dispels all their buffs. Each dispelled buff grants one stack of damage bonus. Increases 3% of damage dealt for every stack. So that with that in mind, guys, keep yeah, keep in mind this is a lot of damage increase. Defense up and then attack up as well. Like it's it's just a lot. So you want to have someone in your roster that can dispel buffs or prevent them. So buff prohibition or buff dispel. Even multiple heroes that do it are great. But I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have one at the moment. Then back here, shield form. Um, 
again stuns the furthest away enemy yeah 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 it switches back to sword form so he's just gonna be like alternating his forms and then at the ultimate here in sword form he's gonna deal again deal um oh sorry sorry like all the buffs he's gonna deal more damage after buffing himself and again going to gain more stacks of the total damage bonus for every buff dispelled so as you can hear with the word buff dispelled a lot not only do you want to prevent the boss's buffs that he puts on himself but you want to make sure that you don't have buffs on yourself when you are having the boss do the ultimate here at 18 seconds at least because he's just going to add more stacks so what you can do if you want which i never talked about before is you can actually have someone in your roster that does buffs if you're buffing the team or doing some sort of heal like a continuous heal instead but they have to go after the boss's ultimate so you want them to go after 18 seconds they can go at like 19 seconds instead so if you're choosing to use a healer that does do buffs for example you want them to go at like 19 seconds uh, and then they need to be fast enough to stay in an 18 second rotation for their ultimate skill as far as the skill haste and whatnot goes for the skill timing presets or else it's going to get all out of whack and be a hot mess and then you're going to wonder why the boss hits so hard but yeah that's the biggest thing so number one having a hero with resistance to avoid the stun uh having buff prohibition or dispelling to get rid of these attack up smacks that the boss is going to do and the defense up that could help as well uh and then number three don't use heroes that buff unless you're going to time them to go at like 19 seconds after 18 seconds at the very least all right so let's take a look here um I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the lineup recommendations so we could see how this plays a role. At stage 7, you start getting the legendary drops, so that's why we're looking here first. So you're going to see the same people quite a lot. Um, Adolphus is a great support in a team that works so well here. Um, I mean, Furboth, a lot of people love him, have him. Erich as the DPS is great. Hexandra is a really great option as the healer because she doesn't put up any buffs so you don't even have to worry about when her timing is you can just let her go she's also a good one to put her in a resistance chest uh don't do like these people do not guys don't level up flats tag gear it's not worth it anyway um she's a great one to put a resistance chest and then you just look for like enlightenment as the other stat for her battle skill sake and then she's a good healer the resistance chest here is even better if you need her to be the target for the, well, prevention of the stun, right? You just put her in the back row. But you're going to see here, a lot of the same heroes are going to do really well. Vinyara is one of the best heroes for this boss overall. She's immune to control effects. So she cannot be stunned anyway. So you just kind of let the boss put her in the back and the boss can't can't stun her don't even have to worry about resistance and then here she also dispels all buffs and reduces ultimate energy so that's really cool too so Vinyara is amazing she allows some really creative teams or she allows you to have a lot more flexibility because she deals with multiple things that you need to deal with for this boss oh, excuse my yawn oh my goodness all right anyway ancient battlefield 12 let's take a look here so you can really see what people are using at the hardest stage possible. So you're going to see um, we have a cleanser. We don't need to really need a cleanser, but he's just there to heal, I suppose. Again, he's a good healer because he doesn't put up buffs to worry about. And he also brings attack penalty and accuracy penalty, which is great against this boss. A lot of people probably have V-Cook. Really good. It's always a good idea to have attack penalty in your team as well, because that's just going to help to have more survivability no matter what boss you're facing um i guess that's kind of the main thing sigrid's always great for her damage and putting up attack penalty as well forest is a solid tank easy to keep alive so he's a good option he does put a shield on himself but not a buff but he can put a buff up on his ultimate so 
often people do make Horus turn off the ultimate so he's not putting up extra buffs and then he's a little bit better of a tank. I think I got away with using him here um, at the lower stages though without turning off his ultimate for now. But yeah, you're seeing Dane, Hexandra, Sigrid for both Adolphus. That is a popular team, apparently. I love it. Adolphus is great because he provides shields, so he's just more survivability, honestly, overall. is kind of the deal there. So let's go in. I'm going to show you guys my team and my roles that they're playing. So I do have Horus as a tank here. Uh, he does not have... Um, skills right now. I do want to get him skilled eventually. And I do have him with the crown, so I want him to use his ultimate. But if the buffs are an issue and our stacks are getting too big of that damage bonus, then I'm going to have to turn off his ultimate and give him a different artifact. We have Dane here with Witch's Remains, even better version of the crown. Not ideal for Witch's because he only hits once, but he's all I got, so it is what it is. So Dane's here to uh, just be a wonderful buff stripper. And Sigrid is here to apply attack penalty to help us survive. And of course, do some damage along the way as well. Uh, Torin is here as my kind of protection for my tank. He also does do a lot of healing. So he's my healer, but you could just have Megan or someone else instead. Uh, and I have the Adventurer here as Ice to give us shields to just have more survivability. And she is in a resistance chest. Plus, we got some really good uh, resistance rolls. Like, there it is on a rune. And I think I had some resistance rolls on something else here. Oh, that was a different set. But yeah, this um, this is okay. She's got enough. So you want to take a look here. Recommended resistance, recommended accuracy, 170. I have more than that, so we're good to go for now. Don't forget, if you need some extra resistance, a lot of these um, consumables can provide you with some pretty solid resistance. So that can definitely come in handy. 20 resistance, 20 accuracy on this one. I love that one. So definitely use that if you need to. Don't, don't be shy. So let's take a look here at my team again. The equipment plan is... I have... Torin, I have... Oh, he's no... Eh, it's fine. So Torin is my healer and he has buffs. So I have to make sure he's at an 18 second rotation. So he's in the incense burner to allow me to do that. Uh, and then, yeah, I kind of already showed the others. Sigrid is my main source of damage. And she's amazing, of course. So our timing here, uh, because Dane is wearing my Witch's Remains, I have him at 12 seconds and then Sigrid at 12.5. So she does that after the defense penalty has hopefully landed. And their time, they're at a 20 second rotation just because that's what they're near. I could do 19.7 technically, but they're not in an 18 second rotation, but they don't really need to be. They're just doing damage whenever they can. Torrin is again the one. He puts up buffs on his ultimate, which we don't want to happen right before the boss does their ultimate. So he's at 19 seconds on an 18 second rotation. Now, keep in mind, um, when you're using an artifact like the Incense Burner or the um, Hourglass, when you go here, you're going to be like, 19.5, oh, I can't go to 18. Yes, you can. You can actually just make it go down. The game doesn't calculate these artifacts with this, unfortunately, unless it's a main part of the stat, so it really doesn't affect it, sadly. It doesn't, at least it doesn't work with uh, the, the bulk of the um, artifact, if it has, like, extra skill haste or some sort of energy uh, manipulation it does not work for calculations but it will work at 18 seconds don't worry all right let's go into the battle and if you are worried about again if you're worried about your accuracy or your resistance just pop one of these consumables to make sure you have an extra boost boom and they can stack so as you can see here i have nine i have 10 minutes of those buffs if you take two or three, they, that adds up to longer time if you're doing auto battles. So if you find yourself needing consumables to succeed, that's okay. All right, so here we go. So resist. See, the Traveler got resisted right away when the boss did that single target hit toward the Traveler. So that's what we want to see. That is a huge, huge help. Because if the Traveler gets stunned, she's not putting up those shields. And she's not helping to keep the team alive, right? 
Right there, let's see, when Dane goes, you're going to see the buffs go bye-bye. There goes the buffs, and then Sigrid does her damage, and attack penalty goes up, so the boss doesn't hit quite as hard with the ultimate. The good thing about this game is it does not consider shields buffs. So if you put up shields, that doesn't count for the boss doing its hard hit when people are under buffs. So that really is nice. Also, like when people dispel buffs again in general, um, shields don't count. So you have to be able to dispel shields separately. They're two different things. Alrighty, we're doing pretty good here. Again, if I had, if I was getting a little bit hit too hard, we're getting too many stacks of the special annoying total damage bonus, then I would probably turn off Horus's ultimate so he's not putting buffs on himself because they do make it worse. So if you find yourself being a little bit squishy and you happen to be using Horus as your tank, again, just turn off his ultimate. So he's not buffing. And he still can help applying attack penalty with his battle skill. But again, you could also time him to go after the boss does the ultimate. And then we're not worried. And then, boom, he could go ahead and apply potentially another defense penalty debuff to help the battle be faster. So it's something you could manual or semi-manual, like if you're watching your battle like I am now, I could hold Horus back and only let him use his ultimate when it's the right time after the boss has done the final ultimate. That's another way to kind of push through, especially if you're stuck and you want to just progress for something on the trials that you have to like do a certain stage or whatever it may be. It's like, boom, ultimate. Okay, Horus can do his ultimate again. Boom. And there we go. But yeah, there we go. There, that's kind of this the mechanics of this boss. Uh, so avoid heroes with buffs unless you're going to time them to go after the ultimate and keep them on an 18 second rotation or do it manually. Have a hero in the back that has resistance based on that, that level to um, actually not take the stun. And yeah, buff strippers or dispellers. And always attack penalty and every team is needed. But yeah, there we go, guys. I hope this guide was helpful. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Be sure to download via Android, iOS, Mac, PC, Steam, or Epic Games if you haven't already. And thanks again to Dragonair Silent Gods for sponsoring today's video.